So when many people think about AI, they think about the Terminator with Arnold Schwarzenegger going, I'll be back. And um, although this is a particularly fictitious approach to AI, it's not often the reality. AI is what predicts what you're going to type next on your phone. AI is what can automatically label images, so you don't need to scroll through hundreds of images, but just search your birthday party, and you find exactly what you want. And AI is what better recommends our Netflix movies and what we like to watch from what we've seen before. So how exactly does this concept work? Essentially, you have a lot of data, and you have a lot of computing power, and now you put them together, and you're able to make a prediction on new samples, samples that it's never seen before. So now let's take a look at an example of diabetic retinopathy. Essentially, for people with poorly controlled diabetes, uh, their blood vessels in their eyes may rupture and uh, cause blindness. So you, know, you go to the doctor, you look at a diagnosis, and the doctor is like, OK, the, uh, the blood vessels behind the cornea have been damaged, and hence you may have diabetic retinopathy. Now, if you bring AI into the picture here, you feed in thousands of samples of eyes with diabetic retinopathy, thousands of samples of eyes without diabetic retinopathy, and now I can just take a picture of perhaps my eye or your eye, and I'll uh, be able to find out whether I have a chance of getting diabetic retinopathy. Now, although this process may seem ineffective, because as humans, we have no direct say as to what the machine uh, learns, because as doctors, we see certain patterns, such as you know, the blood vessels, uh, the patterns behind the cornea, but for machines, it's just a bunch of numbers. So different patterns within the numbers indicate whether uh, you may have diabetic retinopathy. And this process, although ineffective, can actually lead to great results as it's able to beat uh, human doctors at uh, diagnosing these kind of diseases. It's also able to generate beautiful, lengthy paragraphs of text. And it's also able to better recommend Netflix movies so we can entertain ourselves more. So um, there's one key problem, though. In these AI models, there's a thorough lack of cultural diversity. So let me take another example. If we take a picture of a person um, in a Scottish right, perhaps wearing a kilt and having a bagpipe, um, you feed it into these modern day models, and uh, you're able to find these models are able to perfectly predict, OK, this person's wearing a kilt. They have a bagpipe going on. It's probably a Scottish right. Now, if we feed in a picture of the uh, Mexican tradition, the Day of the Dead, it's not able to identify the mask, not able to identify that, in fact, there's a crowd of people there, and not able to identify that it's a Mexican tradition. Oftentimes, people of color and other ethnicities are left out of these AI models, and this inhibits the uh, service of the governments and businesses who employ AI, and it reduces their service to their target customers and their citizens. So how exactly do we solve this problem? Now, the common denominator throughout my entire talk has been data. The more culturally inclusive and diverse data that we have, the more culturally aware our AI model is going to become. It boils down to the better the data, the better the AI. Now, many people think that this problem can only be solved by scientists from universities and companies with deep pockets in AI. And although that can be particularly effective, the change is not always driven, and the responsibility falls on us, individuals who have stories that make us unique in our own ways. Stories have been, thrilled, have been told throughout generations, and um, by sharing our stories, we're truly able to get a look into the heart of these AI models and make them better serve our communities, better serve our people, and better serve us. In fact, I've been fortunate enough to work with former NPR journalist uh, Davar Ardalan on this very problem, where I'm volunteering to create a global data set challenge. So by sharing our stories, the scientists and the companies will start to take notice, and we can work together in order to build a culturally inclusive and diverse future with technology in mind. So I challenge you, share your stories, folk tales that have been told for generations, Maybe a story, uh, a bedtime story that your parents or grandparents told you before you went to bed. And by sharing your stories, we'll be able to work together 
in order to truly redefine the cultural IQ of these AI models and build a safer and more inclusive future for all of us. Thank you.